In this episode of Go Fast Brett, we're going to be literally looking at making cars go faster with boost. That's shocking. I love boost, and who doesn't love boost? Turbos are awesome because they make your car go faster. Now how do you go faster when you've already got a turbo? Turn up the boost. Most people know the differences between electronic boost controllers and manual boost controllers, and they've heard all the things about wastegates, but how do they actually work? What's happening when you turn up the boost? So the first thing to do, let's have a look at the system components that are involved with boost control. The most obvious thing, of course, is the turbo. You've got the turbo here, exhaust going in there, spinning it up, making it go faster, pumping air out of there, going in your engine, making boost. Now, second thing is the wastegate uh, collectively. Because this is an internal wastegate, it's actually split into two parts. You've got a wastegate actuator and the wastegate flap in there. Now this is what actually controls the boost. So let's have a look at how the wastegate actually controls the boost pressure. So you've got exhaust coming from the engine going into the turbine. That's spooling up the turbo. What the wastegate does is opens up a little flap just before the turbine to relieve the exhaust pressure so it no longer spools the turbo. If once you've reached your peak pressure, it's the wastegate's job to open that flap and control its position so that you maintain your optimum boost pressure. All right, so the wastegate is actually split into two parts because we're talking about an internal wastegate here. We've got the flap and then we've got the actuator. Now the actuator's job is actually to move the flap in the right position. So how does the wastegate actually control the position of the flap? Well, using the wastegate actuator here, which is made up of this can, inside under the cap there is a spring, and inside that, or underneath that, there is a diaphragm. Now the top of it is referenced to boost pressure. Normally that would connect straight through there so it sees what boost pressure the turbo is making. The more pressure there is, the further the flap will open. So essentially this is actually a self-regulating kind of closed loop system. The higher the boost pressure goes, the further the wastegate flap opens and the more it will limit the boost pressure. So if boost pressure goes too far, the flap opens further, boost pressure will drop. So it will regulate pressure quite well as a system on its own. Now here's where boost controllers come into the whole situation. The spring in this wastegate controls what the base boost pressure is. So on this particular turbo, it's gonna be about seven PSI. So if you just connect that straight onto there, you're gonna get about seven PSI of boost. Now, if you wanna go higher than that, what you need to do is put a boost controller into these two hoses. What's gonna happen is the boost controller will regulate the pressure going to the top here and then modify the uh, the boost pressure signal that gets here and therefore how much boost you get. So the more you bleed out of here, the less this actuator sees, the more it's gonna close the wastegate flap and the more boost you get and the faster you go. So there's a couple of different ways that you can actually modulate the pressure going into the wastegate actuator. Uh, the most simple form is just a bleed valve that simply plugs in there, plugs in there. And what this is, is basically a calibrated leak and an adjustable one at that. So you can adjust how much air bleeds out of this line, which reduces the pressure to the actuator. You could also use an electronic boost controller, uh, which does a similar thing, but this solenoid here is controlled by the head unit. Now the head unit will actually reference manifold pressure, and then it will make decisions about how much to bleed out of the line based on what it's seeing and what you've actually set it up to do. So for example, you can make boost go higher, you can make it go lower, you can make it come on harder by holding the boost back from the actuator as the turbo's spooling up, so that will get it there faster. So that's where the advantages of the electronic control come in. But basically, they're all doing the same thing. All boost controllers bleed air or prevent pressure getting to the actuator. So that is the fundamentals of how boost controllers actually work. Now, the only thing to keep note of is there are some limitations. Now, your boost controller, whether it's electronic or manual, may not be able to fix some inherent problems with your boost control system. So let's say, for example, you are trying to run 35 PSI on your TD04 on your WRX, and it's not getting there, or it's tapering off towards redline. Well, that's not necessarily a problem with your boost controller. The limitations of any boost control system are dictated by the turbo, the engine, and the spring in the wastegate. So for example, if we were to plug that straight in there and reference this directly to pressure, that is the minimum boost pressure you can run. You can't, with a controller, make it go lower than that. If you want to go higher, the most you can bleed off is 100%. You can disconnect that hose, take it right off there, so this gets no reference boost pressure. And then all it is is a spring holding the wastegate shut. That's the most your turbo will possibly run, 
and a boost controller can't make it run more than that. So if you find that you get into red line and your boost is on the way down, it's not because of your boost controller, it's just this turbo is running out of puff, the wastegate can't keep shut against the exhaust back pressure, and put simply, if you want more boost, you're gonna to need to change the turbo.